Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new RT1 Exchange video. Today, we're continuing our roundup tour of the investment grade wines with round three of our four part series covering the essentials of the great Bordeaux wines. Here are the key facts that you need to know about the incredibly age worthy and fantastically complex sweet wines made in Sauterne. Those are outstanding wines made thanks to a fungus that we love to call noble rot. So how are these wines made and how does it explain that they are so special and so thought after in the world of wine? We'll cover this as well as which are the top estates and chateaus, the top wines as listed in the 1855 classification. Let's go. When one thinks Bordeaux wine, one often mainly thinks of prestigious red wines made from the Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot grapes. But some connoisseurs who know their wine will also think of some delicious white wines as well, made from the local white blend of Sauvignon Blanc with Semillon. But Bordeaux has also for centuries now been reputable for producing some of the most extraordinary sweet wines on earth on the whole planet. Sauternes wines and Bordeaux aren't always naturally associated in people's mind, but the Sauternes appellation is well and truly part of the Bordeaux wine region. This is located just south of the Grave, around a little town that is called Sauternes, the appellation was named after it. This is some 30 miles only from the city of Bordeaux. The area also counts with another couple of lesser known towns or locales, Serons and Barsac. The letter is quite famous and quite often seen on wine labels and corks as you can see. Sauterne Barsac is also a famous name in the area. Sauternes are sweet white wines that are generally called dessert wines because they go well with dessert. But they are not fortified wines just like port wines can be or some fortified sweet musket wines that you may be familiar with. Meaning that no alcohol is added to stop the fermentation. No alcohol is added. This is all natural. Those are naturally very sweet wines that are fermented just like any other wine. But they are so sweet and concentrated from the juice, the grape juice, and we'll talk about this in a minute, that the yeast can't ferment all of the sugar in it. So there is a large amount of what we call residual sugars after fermentation, hence Sauternes wines being sweet. But more than the sugar content, the outstanding feature of Sauternes wines is the outstanding aromatic concentration that they display, with incredibly intense notes of honey and blonde caramel that form the background, the backbone of their flavor profile. They also boast striking aromas of rich and very sweet tropical fruit characters like dried pineapple and mango. There's some juicy lychee characters, dried apricot and fig, raisin and sultanas, as well as for the best example, some delicate floral aromas, floral notes of lily and elderflower. They're really quite a unique tasting experience. If you've never tried it, well, you should do so. They are deepened and amplified by the long maturation in oak that they go through at the winery, adding depth, some sweet spices, some cinnamon, nutmeg, really quite a sensation, mixing spices, fruit characters, dried fruit. Wow, there's so much going on when you taste a Sauternes wine. It's really quite unique. And this is really what explains it all. All of the magic of Sauternes, the concentration, the age-worthiness that we'll talk about in a minute, that's how Sauternes wine is made. So pay attention here and let's talk about it. We talked about where Sauternes, the town and the producing area is located earlier. But you have to know that this specific area of the Bordeaux region is at a crossing between two rivers, the Garonne and the Ciron, which makes this area particularly humid, its atmosphere is quite humid, a lot of water in the atmosphere from the rivers, and this is very favorable to the development of a fungus, of a rot that loves to eat the grapes, that's called the Botrytis fungus. This is pretty much the same fungus that loves to eat your oranges and other fruits if you leave them for too long in the basket on your kitchen table. But because this area has both a lot of humidity and rather cool climatic conditions in the morning and dry weather in the afternoon, that's before harvest or during harvest, the fungus can't just eat the whole grape bunches. 
it develops very slowly just under the skin of the grapes and that's what we call the noble rot. This phenomenon allows the water from the grapes to evaporate slowly during harvest time and the sugars and flavors to concentrate greatly into the grape juice. We end up with almost shriveled berries but that are very ripe but also very concentrated. This uniquely makes the grapes both very concentrated and very fruity. It's not just like raisin juice that wouldn't taste very interesting if you fermented it. It would feel rather heavy on the palate to taste, right? This is much more magical than this as you get both the fresh fruit flavors from fresh grapes as well as a raisin-like concentration from the shriveled berries. And finding a spot on earth that allows to have this noble rot developing without the grapes completely rotting is actually very rare because there is a thin line between the two rotten grapes and concentrated grapes and fresh grapes. And this is what makes the unique character because there is this fantastic spot on earth in Bordeaux that makes such fantastic Sauterne wines. Because Sauterne grapes have been somewhat oxidized and affected by this Botrytis fungus and also because the wines are aged for about two years in barrels before they are bottled and released, the resulting wines are virtually indestructible. They are very stable over time as they've already seen and surpassed a lot of oxidation before bottling. So time affects them, yes, but very, very slowly. So Sauterne wines can be incredibly age worthy aging positively for a great amount of time for decades in great harmony. A good Sauterne wine typically ages superbly for about 20 years and it will still taste good after 40 years, especially in great vintages. Now the wines go from vibrant, fresh, tropical and dried fruit characters of pineapple and apricot as we talked about before to developing more spicy notes flavors of beeswax and an incredible dips with savory tones of toasted hazelnut curry, healthy notes of truffle. It's a whole new, rare and complex world that opens up in a glass of sauterne when it passes 20 years in ages for that amount of time. This is also the secret to, to why sauterne wines are so and thought after so demanded by connoisseurs because they can age for decades and decades and only get and pack much more concentration, much more characters, much more complexity. They become even more interesting to taste. And I'll keep it short here because it is fairly easy to identify the best chateaus that makes the best Sauterne wine. They are basically listed on the 1855 classification of the wines from Sauterne and Barsac. Because yes, just like the red wines from Medoc that we talked about last week, linking to that video here if you've missed it, it's worth having a look at it if you want to understand the 1855 classification. The sweet wines from Sauterne were also ranked in that famous classification ordered by Napoleon III if you remember. And because Sauterne wines are so expensive to produce, yes, I did forget to mention earlier that Sauterne wines are the most expensive wines to produce in Bordeaux because it takes a lot of effort to harvest those grapes. They have to pick small berries several times going out in the vineyard several times to only pick small berries that are very concentrated and give a lot, um, a small amount of juice. Because those wines are so expensive, virtually only the top chateaus that have benefited from an ancient reputation since 1855 have been able to sustain this such an expensive production. And also it's on that very specific spot that is very small and really rare to find on earth. No one has been able to reproduce such conditions to make such great wines. So a small amount of chateaus all pretty much listed on the 1855 classification. Yet you have to know that in the 1855 classification, there is only one premier cru supérieur or superior first growth, and this is the famous Chateau Dikem. And everyone acknowledges that Dikem is simply one notch above everyone else in terms of finesse, of balance, and age-worthiness of its wines, hence it commanding by far the highest prices as well. Some of the most expensive wines in Bordeaux for sure. The 1855 classification also includes a premier cru category with 11 chateaux that also makes some fantastic wines with such great famous names as Chateau Rieusset, Clemens, Guiraud, Lafaurie, Perraguet, 
I'll link to the full list in the video description. No need to name them all here. Then there is a second crew category or second gross, which are nearly as prestigious, although a little less, with 14 chateaus for a grand total of 27 classified chateaus in, in Sauterne and Barsac. Here is what you needed to know about the fantastic wines from Sauterne. Any questions, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to the RT Wine Exchange channel to continue with me learning more about the wonderful world of wine. Next week, we'll continue exploring the top Bordeaux wines with some exclusive wines from around the region, the Grave, the Fronsac, the most expensive wine in the Bordeaux wine region. No, it's not Petrus, we'll talk about it. And I will see you soon in the wonderful world of fine and rare wines. Signing off, Julia Michel, I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Au revoir. Bye bye. Cheers.